Hi, um, good afternoon, everyone. I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us. I know that everyone is really busy and um, hopefully not multitasking, but I was multitasking myself and so I totally understand. Um, but hopefully you're here to reboot and we're here to present um, the world of work RISEC for school counselors. Um, I attended a session earlier today and I loved how one of the counselors described saying that um, our, our, our encounters with students should not be transactional, they should be transformational. So the hope is by attending this, um, you are able to find a way to transition um, the conversations with students. So um, let's see, we are going to start with, oh, sorry, my name is Madeline Brian reed I am a counselor at LCC and Flying Hills in the Cahoe Valley Union School District. This is my 15th year as a counselor. Um, I've done many PDs in my district, but this is my first one doing countywide. Um, and my partner today is Melanie Brandt, and she's an amazing world of work facilitator, and I'll let her introduce herself. I'm Melanie Brandt. Um, like Madeline mentioned, I'm a, a TOSA, a teacher on special assignment for the past two years. Prior to that, I was a classroom teacher, mostly spent my career in special ed, elementary special ed, a little bit of middle school. And then my last few years, I taught fourth grade before transitioning as a facilitator coach. So um, some exciting stuff. I'm so happy uh, Madeline and I teamed up this year to help and support our counselors in our district um, with this work. And we wanted to share it further out with everybody. Um, who would like to learn more. So thank you for being here. Um, our hope is that by talking to kids about their strengths, interests, and values that we can start a different conversation. No longer looking at kids that have D's and F's and just telling them, hey, you're failing. They already know that. We're taking the conversation to a different level by making them mean meaningful. So as you see, um, we have what's called SIVJ cards, and that's part of our World of Work curriculum. And in it, it has a strengths, interest, value, and job question. We selected one question from each of the different categories. And what we would like you to do is pick a letter, S, I, V, or J, and then just write in the chat either what strengths do you appreciate in others, what is the most interesting place you've ever visited, when you did something wrong, what is something you did to fix the situation? Or what are the five jobs that require people to be really brave? So go ahead in the chat, write either S, I, V, or J so we know which question you're answering. And then go ahead and write and then answer the question. So this is kind of just showing you how we start the conversation. Okay, so we have Holly that went to Egypt. Thanks for sharing. Japan, Nicole, thanks for sharing. V, so doing, when you did something wrong, what is something you did to fix it? starting by start by owning my part then help resolve it that's very good thanks for sharing peter um mary marina went to russia um where five jobs that require people to be really brave school counselors doctors nurses firefighters parents thank you ann Spain. Thank you, Angela. What strengths do you appreciate in others? Um, I think for me, one of my favorite things that I appreciate in others is their willingness to um, be flexible and to help where there's help that, you know, when we need it. So I think the flexibility aspect is um, 
is something I enjoy. Like Murray, I just wrote flexibility, empathy, sense of humor. Those are definite, definitely strengths that I appreciate as well too. And um, I did write in there, but in the notes section on that slide, we have a document that you can access for more of the questions that you can use. You don't necessarily have to have the physical cards. And it's just a great way to get their morning meeting or if you have a small group or um, some administrators might even use those just to start conversations with students differently um, based on strengths, interests, values versus just typical questions, what's your favorite color, what subject do you like? It can kind of get students thinking differently, which brings us to this statement here that career development is a human process and that one-on-one -on -one conversations or small group conversations is really important, impactful. And we want to show that it's not just for the counselors, that the career development can be done with any adult that's in the students' lives, parents, um, We've even just recently started um, training our campus security to know this, this language of strengths, interests, and values so that it's not always a negative encounter. And our, like I said, our parents, our library techs, anybody that comes in contact with our children, it's really important that they have some of this language and, and they can start um, talking with students based on strengths, interests, and values versus just kind of the, the typical things that you might ask a student or it's that it's all negative. So it's a, it's a good thing um, and we don't want to wait till they're in high school and it falls all on counseling. It can start as early as kindergarten. And even when you're youngsters showing signs of interest in, in preschool and, and earlier to kind of have conversations with them that and point them in directions that there are careers that align to those things you enjoy and that your interests will change throughout your life, um, especially for our young children but it's just that the human process and human connection is really, really important. Uh, so I, I came from the classroom. This was the last classroom of students that I had. And I started to integrate um, the RIASEC and strengths and values in the class this, this final year. And it really changed the class as a whole community. Um, once the students learned a little bit more about themselves, about their own unique strengths and interests, they also started to look at their um, classmates differently and knowing that they needed to, to call on each other in groups that um, diversified the interests and the strengths instead of all grouping up just because all the smart kids in one group or all the, you know, the um, artistic kids in another group, they realized how they had to diversify their groups. And this young man on the right who built a wow, they really liked the world of work with his Minecraft block. He came from third grade with uh, a, just a, a big record of, I think, 12 suspensions prior to coming to fourth grade. He was that kid that couldn't sit still, um, kind of labeled like the naughty kid and always in trouble. But that fourth grade year, when everybody started looking at each other's strengths versus deficits, this young man left fourth grade with zero suspensions and trips to the principal for negative encounters. So I really looked at this this lens of strengths, interests, values as a classroom teacher and thought that um, it changed the classroom dynamics and moving forward that a position open where I could go out and coach the district wide level and kind of influence um, more teachers and students. But really looking at that was impactful. And then obviously having a connection with the counselors as needed and with the staff and the admin but really seeing what a difference it made for these students. And it had been you know, 15 plus years in the classroom and there was something significantly different about this group of kids when they started to look at each other's strengths versus deficits. And this came from a therapist friend. Um, I often talk about what I do with my good friend and she's a therapist out here in the East County and she sees students from all over the region. And, during the pandemic, she just shot me this text. A young girl had been out of school and disconnected from her peers and her teachers for, it was probably about six weeks. And she had a therapy session. And um, for whatever reason, what I, why she was there, I don't know, but all that she couldn't stop talking about was her RIASEC and her unique interests. And she was just validated that even beyond the classroom walls, that this is what that girl, the young lady was connecting with in her therapy session. So um, it was really, really validating as she said, and just um, really hit home to why we wanna do this. And the people outside in the community, her own therapist who knows about it can also support that. And that's that, that human touch and human connection. 
So why wow, why now? Um, we're in a pandemic. Things are so different. Education is so different. Life is different. And I feel like now is the time to make a change on how we view things, on how we work with kids, on how we talk with them. And um, especially, I don't know about you, but trying to connect with kids is so challenging right now. And I think if we um, unarm them by just talking to them about things that they're interested in, things about them versus like, oh, you're not doing well in school. Um, I think it's important that we have these conversations, that we expose kids to different kinds of jobs. I mean, I remember as a kid, all I knew about were, what is it, lawyer, doctor, teacher? What are the other, what are the other kinds of jobs that are out there? What about an, a graphic designer or an artist? Or what about an actor? Or what about, um, you know, an engineer or an architect? Those are so many different jobs that we don't even know or our students may not even know about. So what's important is that we should, we should as educators have an influence on what the kids are being exposed to. Every student has unique strengths, interests and values and a place in the world. We need to expose the kids to all the different careers and help them see possible, their possible selves in any kind of career. And like Melanie said before, it'll change from you know kindergarten, first, second, third, but at least if they start that idea of exploring, that would help hopefully keep going in middle and high school. So as we know, the student to counselor ratio is just really hard to, to be okay with. Um, we have, it should be 250. It's more than likely not. Um, and as you can probably anticipate, mental health has just pretty much skyrocketed since the whole quarantine and pandemic. And so instead of putting this all on counselors, it's important that we look at who are our career coaches? Who is someone else that we can share, you know, the burden of trying to teach these things to, to, to students? Um, there's all the staff members, all the teachers, um, the counselors, even an AP or a principal can share this information. This on the left is a library that we converted at Cajon Valley Middle School, which is one of the middle schools on our district, where now it's a career center. And this is open to parents as well. So say a parent or a grandparent, because they're the ones that take care of their kid, the, their grandbabies now, say they want to explore different careers. I mean, now is such a great transitional time for them to even explore. So take this little quiz here and see what are your strengths, interests, and values? What are things that you kind of want to do? Maybe it's a second career. Maybe it's a, you know, just something that you never thought of or didn't realize that you had a love or a passion for. So we think about who are our career coaches. It can be anybody. It can be the mechanic that you go to because if your child's interested in mechanics, then that person can tell you their path. Or it can be the nail beautician. Like, well, how did you get to that path? It could be anybody. Anybody could be a career coach. Okay. And here's some of the, the research that you can look into later, but that um, interest. So there's interest show, research shows that if they're interested, if you're interested in what you do, it's really gonna connect to job satisfaction if it's something that you're really passionate about and you love what you do. Um, parent involvement, community involvement is very, really important as well. And even if it's grandparents taking care of the children, aunts and uncles, any of those parent connections is, is really important. And then that exposure. So talking to students and um, exposing them to careers that like they maybe not known exist. And, and um, what I love is that we can also talk about dignity in all work and that if your student, the trades and the um, AA degrees, those are all very wonderful routes past 12th grade and there's dignity in all work. And if the student has those interests in being a mechanic or being a tradesman woman, then that is definitely okay. And we can support that because it's based on their own unique self-awareness and satisfaction. 
This is just a chart we've been kind of adding to just so you can, you know, the key vocabulary for career development, just so we kind of, kind of sort things out. So we have what, what are the self-awareness components and then all the different post-secondary kind of options for students. And we don't just say it's all career, you know, college bound, but how can we get to those, those wonderful careers that we want to pursue? There's all those different um, avenues. And then different career resources, different websites. And then there's many ways, especially now during, you know, we have a lot more um, computer online and we saw through the pandemic how ways of working has changed. Um, you don't just go to the same job for 40 years, punch the clock eight to five. You can piecemeal a career. You can be a gig worker. You can be part-time. You know, you can join the union. You can be a contractor. Um, and you can still have the traditional eight to you know eight to five careers for 40 years as well so it just depends on what your values are and what you want to do in your life and then just some other words kind of thinking that you can have conversations with students just about networking kind of that springboard job you know that was a new kind of word that I learned recently um like my first job at the bottle shop pizza out here in, in my neighborhood was my springboard job it's what I learned my first 16 year old, that's what I learned to do. I worked at the took orders, I worked customer service, knowing that eventually that would take me to a different route. Um, and, and how do we, some of us, some people end up at that as their career, whether it's based on their, that's their path and that's their passion, they wanna stay there or they're stuck. And that's where like our career centers coming into play with our community is how can they get above and, or beyond that springboard job if that's not where they wanna be, so. Just some new old words, but then some new ones as well. And I start, kind of started mentioning where it's grounded on that self-awareness and each student kind of is more aware of themselves. And we break it up into what's our strengths, interests, and values. And our strengths is how we do something. That's kind of our natural talents. And we have students that are naturally good at striking up conversations. And some of us were not so much, that's not our thing. Um, you're naturally good at math. Some of us were naturally strong in, in, in sports. So it's just how you, you're naturally good at things. The interest piece is really what you're interested in and what it could be a passion, or maybe it's something that you just lose track of time doing. And how does that connect with, with ourself? And then our values is kind of that why piece. You know, why, why do we want to work a certain way? Do we honor and value working outdoors? Um, do we like to work indoors? Do we like working with groups of people in a community? Or do we like to work alone? And so you have to find that, that, that connection. If, if working with people in a small group or large group isn't your thing, then that's okay. You're aware of that. And how can we uncover that? We try to teach our students too to understand that and to advocate. You know, if, if perhaps they don't work very well with a small group of, in a small group for a project, maybe they can use that language of, you know, that's not really my workplace value. And how can we go to our teacher and say, I'd prefer to work perhaps alone or, or I'm going to get through this, but usually I like to prefer to work alone or with the, just with the partner. But they wanted, we want them to start identifying that and understanding how they work best, just as we can and do as adults. And we usually like to start when we're having conversations with students to kind of get them their self-awareness is that interest piece. And that, that's where the RIA set comes in. And I know um, perhaps when you were in your credentialing program and in your school for um, becoming counselor or teachers, they might've covered this vaguely or through a class. And so we've really taken it and it's kind of the framework for what we like to have for our students. We do it with parent groups. We do it with anybody. I've done management, um, the RISEC, like at our local mall who supported our schools. They also took it to they understand their unique RISEC. It's an old, um, the widely um, developed, it was developed by John Hyland. It's been um, researched time and time again. He started out as a recruiter for the military. And when um, the military were done and they retired out of the military, he would kind of talk to them and gain an, an, an idea of what they wanted to do, what are their interests, what are they, their strengths, what do they like to work, how do they like to do stuff, and he would start to place them in jobs. And then he started to kind of realize there were six kind of common areas, which kind of how we created the RIASEC. And so then he started to see you know, the connection of if they're in something they like to do, something aligns with their interest, 
they had more job satisfaction. And so that's where it kind of grew um, from there. And like we see here, it's, you see where's Waldo or it's a lot of big community and we need everybody. We need all the different types of people. We need our realistic doers, our investigative thinkers, artistic creators, social helpers, conventional organizers, and our enterprising persuaders to makes our community and makes our workplace. We wanna tap into everybody's strengths and interests to make our work, I'd say easier and better. And so we'll go through, um, there's the different kind of little um, quick blurbs on each one there. And what we have our students do is called the RIASEC self-assessment that they understand what each letter means and how it connects to them. And you can do this however it works best. If you have small groups that you pull for students, if you have a one-on-one -on -one session, um, if sometimes we have like advisory classes where our counselors push in for some time, however that fits best, what, we, what we'd like to do is go over what each one's means, the characteristics and the students to start to say, okay, I most identify with, um, Maybe the first one I identify with was S, social. And then I kind of identify next with realistic. And then third is conventional. We'd like them to kind of identify with two to three and understand how that fits with, the, with what they enjoy doing and what, they, what they're interested in. And so this is an activity that we take um, probably about fourth grade and up through. Um, and, and I say up all the way through our adult learners as well. And we um, go over each letter. There's a short video that we'll show and then they kind of self-assess. So this activity, the, what I'm gonna have you think about is what would someone who is realistic do on their weekend? And if you're unfamiliar with me, what the meaning is, it's okay. We're gonna go through some in, um, information on the next few slides that will allow you and help you to understand how to answer that. So realistic doers, some of their motivations and values is they like to build and repair. They like being outdoors, making things work, um, craftsmanship, physical challenge and tradition. These little videos here were designed, they're drawings designed by the University of Buffalo and they're on YouTube and they're free source, they're out there. What we also do is show these videos, they're one minute long. I'm just gonna show you the first one just so you can get an idea of what they look like. And we ask the students to think about anything that connects with them. If they see it or hear it on these little drawings, connect. And then we would have them have like a piece of paper and kind of tally or mentally keep track of which one sticks out the most. So I'm gonna show you just the realistic one. And then with the information we provide, you should be able to answer that first question. And then we'll go through each one, but we'll just go through motivations and values. So I'm gonna play and hope that it, it sounds okay. People who identify with the realistic theme see themselves as practical, mechanical, and active. They enjoy hands-on activities, which may include working with animals, tools, or machines. In their spare time, they may enjoy activities including mechanics, gardening, hunting or fishing, carpentry, making jewelry, playing sports, driving vehicles, skydiving, or landscaping. You can often find people that align with the realistic theme in outdoor settings, in national parks, athletic facilities, farms or greenhouses, or in the military. Some of the greatest skills they possess include building and repairing, using tools and equipment, concrete problem solving, growing plants, and anything involving manual dexterity, public safety, and engineering and technology. They tend to value things you can see, touch and use in their life and often want their work to be hands-on, physical, and fairly active. So that's our realistic doer. So if you, if students, we would ask them if they saw anything that was interest to them, that connected with them, they would kind of make us some sort of tally. And then we would ask, and of course I clicked out, I thought it was just the, uh, thought it was just the um, YouTube video, but it was the whole drive. If that, if that resonates with them. And then we can go back to the question. 
What would somebody who is realistic, well, how would they, what would they do on their weekend? Because if you're realistic, hands-on doer, what would you do on the weekend? You can throw that in the chat while this loads up. Somebody who's realistic. And those videos are also great too with parent groups. I've done them and they have, since they're YouTube, they have an option to translate. And so you can translate for um, your second language parents. Let's see, somebody who's realistic do. So gardening, go on a hike, absolutely. My husband is a tradesman, so on his weekend, he tends to uh, do home projects, whether he enjoys it or they're honeydews, but that's what he finds himself doing on most weekends. Anything outdoors, cooking, absolutely, hands-on. Excellent. So if you're going through this, and this could be done in person with students, and. Um, and or if you were virtual, because it has that ability to kind of um, connect with them and see, you can kind of see their answers that they're getting it and understanding what that means, what a realistic doer would be, okay? Let's go to our investigative thinkers. The next letter is investigative thinkers. So where might someone who is investigative want to work? Some of the motivations and values of an investigator is they're analytical, they like to ask questions and research, um, they value knowledge, new ideas, innovative thinking, academic achievement. Um, so those are all shown in the video, which you will have access to on the Google Slides. And if you're an investigative thinker, are you curious, rational, analytical? Do you like to conduct experiments, figure out puzzles, under, understand why things happen, research to find answers, solve problems using math or science, or think deeply? So some careers could be, oh, I think that's the question we're supposed to answer, right? Yes, so the question is, where might someone who is investigative want to work? So go ahead and write in the chat, um, where might someone who is investigative want to work? In a lab, crime lab, yep, journalism. Sometimes science or research medical science or math. Those are all different investigative um, types of careers as well. And then we have our artistic creators, which the question to think about is who do you know that fits the artistic theme? And some information on our artistic creators. So they're motivated by creative insight, expressing individuality. They, they're self-expressive through, could be through art, music, writing, and cooking and they value creative expression, emotions, and independence and change. And so again, you have access to that artistic video you could show with students or groups if you wish, and it kind of gives some inf more information, um, but all those things, they're involved in self-expression and they, they consider themselves imaginative, expressive, and creative, doing things as, as drawing, painting, playing in a music instrument, um, poetry, music, designing fashion, or attending concerts or plays. So if you think about all of those things, and it could be you that's also an artistic creator, who in your life would you think connects with artistic creators? My eight-year-old is definitely an artistic creator. A dancer, absolutely. A writer. Absolutely, a musician. And our artistic creators tend to value um, creative expression and unstructure. So like my child, I've come to understand through this process of knowing her strengths, interests, values, that her uh, bedroom might not be as clean and tidy as, 
a mother would wish, but you just know that she, that's her creative expression and how she functions and is comfortable. So I've kind of let it go a little bit so you can kind of see where um, that creativeness fits in to each, everyone's unique. All right, so those are our information about artistic creators. So game designers, absolutely. Again, our hairstylists, our nail technicians, that's all arts as well. So S is for social, which is helpers. I wanna say the majority of counselors would have an S somewhere in their Ryan stack. How might someone with social interest theme spend their time during COVID lockdown? So just thinking about how it was in March, how did they spend their time? Um, social helpers, some of their motivations is helping others, empowering others, instructing, nurturing. The values is communication, cooperation, relationships, and feelings. Again, you will have access to the video in the Google Slides that you can share with your students or even your staff. Mm -hmm. And if you're a social helper, are you helpful, understanding, patient? Do you like to help people with problems, lead discussions, do volunteer work, teach or train, take care of others? Are you an advocate for social justice? Um, some careers are counseling and helping, teaching, human resources, health services. So in the chat, I want you to write, how might someone with the social interest theme spend their time during COVID lockdown? So if you had to quarantine, how did you, if you are social, um, spend your time during that maybe March or April when it when they were first shut down? Zoom happy hours, that's a nice way to connect. Yes, family board games. I remember Zooming with my family in Minnesota. It's kind of fun because I'm from California. <laughs> making masks that definitely I saw a lot of people make masks and donate them food for essential workers yes I remember our district had food for, I, I feel like every district had food for students because um, they wanted to make sure that they had access to food screen casting super helpful for those people that kind of struggle with tech like me sometimes <laughs> All right, and our enterprising persuaders, let's think about where might someone who is enterprising want to work and some motivations and values for an enterprising persuader is they like persuading, selling and leading, influencing others, status and power and authority is important and risk-taking. So an enterprising interest involved um, selling, managing, um, typically in businesses, they're ambitious, talkative, and assertive. Things they like to do is debate ideas, lead groups, persuade people, make decisions, um, business projects, sell things. And that's where a lot of entrepreneurs come in and they're risk takers. And they may have a business that doesn't do well, but they're going to bounce right back and take another risk. So many of us, some of us want to be safe and just kind of shy away from that, but we need our enterprising persuaders. So we have some great things coming in there. Um, business, law, marketing is all great. Yes, absolutely. They want to work in those. So sometimes our chatty kids and our kind of kids that can't hold back their ideas that are just kind of impulsive, that's actually a strength. And if we can find ways to channel that and encourage that in our students, um, it, they're going to be something out in our world that we need. And for somebody like me, I'm not enterprising. So I would like to have enterprisers working alongside to do those parts of the job. Um, so we have to just kind of give those kids a break sometimes in classrooms. I know it's hard, but they're, they're somewhere in the world for them and we need their, their risk-taking and their ambition. The last letter is C, conventional organizers. So who in your life do you know who fits the conventional theme? I'm actually a conventional one. <laughs> some, some motivations and values, organizing, processing data, managing information. Some values are accuracy, stability, dependability, security, 
So again, you'll have access to the video in the Google Slides. And if you are an organizer, are you orderly, methodical, efficient? Do you like to find patterns in data, organize collections, keeping accurate records, following a set plan, creating structures and systems, be responsible for details? So going back to our question that you're going to answer in the chat, who in your life do you know who fits the conventional theme? And you could always put yourself too. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yay. <laughs> I'm not the only conventional. <laughs> it's funny, I had um, a teacher that likes to mess around with me. And one time he came into my office and then he pulled open my drawer and he's like, oh my gosh, it's so organized. And he wanted to like mess it all up. Oh, I was like, I'm sorry, my whole life has to be organized. <laughs> Museum, absolutely museums and librarians. So conventional. Oh yes, it's funny. It's okay. Someone says I'm conventional, but I'm also messy. I totally get it. I think I'm conventional in certain aspects of my life, but not in others. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm assuming you're talking about Chris, right, Melanie? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> He's super conventional. <laughs> With conventional, so. It works though. Yes. All right. So if you've never taken the RISEC before, had exposure and had to actually self-assess, which two to three, typically we have the students and we all claim three. Like I said, I'm social, realistic, conventional. So which three best describe you? Are you more of a realistic doer, investigative thinker, artistic creator? social helper, enterprising persuader, or conventional organizer. Like I said, most are two or three themes. If you wouldn't mind sharing your three themes, like I lead with S, so SRC um, is what I would con connect with. And this is another way of students on campus um, have a RIASEC code and they have guests come in that also speak the language of RIASEC. It's a good way to make connections. I had a fourth grader he was um, EAS, so he was enterprising social artistic or something like that. And our superintendent came in and they started to chat and they realized they had the same Ryan set codes. And so that young man, since that moment has these, the drive and desire, he wants to be a school superintendent, which was a career he probably didn't really know existed. I don't think in fourth grade, I knew what, what a superintendent would do. And he's now in seventh grade and he still recalls and he knows the path that he needs to go on to become a school superintendent. There's a video in the slide deck you can look at later, but uh, Sammy wants to pursue that because he met somebody and they connected on, on this information. So let's see our variety of friends here. Okay, so we have a lot of S's, which is very typical for this profession. So we have a Madeline as our social enterprising conventional. We have an RSC, an SAR, SEC, SCR, SIC, SEC, CRI. Okay, very good. So we have a lot of social, um, but we also have a mix of everything. And so when, if we were a small group to have to get a project done, we would hit all the different strengths and interest codes and probably come up with a really good um, thing. We'd all want to be warm and fuzzy and work together and be social helpers. But Patrick would make sure we stayed on schedule because he's he leads with conventional. So he's going to really make sure we stick to that. So um, great sharing there. And yes, a lot of us in this field are social helpers, but we can go to that secondary letter and third one also to balance out our teams. So thank you for sharing. Okay, so if um, you have the time to kind of go through that, um, what we just did with the students, so they really understand each one. There's also different um, scientific inventories, we say. These are quick little assessments they can take on the computer or a tablet. And there's the ONET interest profiler, the University of Hawaii has created one, and then the San Diego Workforce Partnership, and those are all linked. So if you had just a limited amount of time with students, and you just kind of briefly overviewed what each one is, you could have them take these 
uh, short assessments and then the notes it has like some are 60 questions some are 30 but it would give you the similar results so that you had that information to work with students so these are all done computer based um, for you to get some information the students to have information so that's just some connection there and then there's also some other RISEC connections that are pretty relevant for what we do with our students and to show that there is relevance and meaning behind all of this. So Ohio State, I believe Oklahoma State and Arizona that I know of for sure have started to align their um, majors by the RISEC codes. So you could go in the program and um, look and see, like I made sure mine actually aligned. So I looked up social realistic and sure enough, education is one of the majors that it suggests that you can get into based on your RISEC. So you go and you put your first two letters in or there's a PDF um, link there to see what it comes up with. Um, there's a list of occupations by RISEC code, so you can hone in on that with students. And then the ONET, you can browse careers and look up careers. It's the government database of jobs that are actually open to apply for, but have information on careers. And there's, as you go down, it says like knowledge, skills, and education levels needed, and also what the RISEC codes are that align to that career. So again, there's some relevance for the students to understand. And if they're doing some sort of, you know, career search or you're having a conversation, you can say, oh, yeah, I'm really interested in vet tech or being a veterinarian. What do I need to do to get there? And you can browse on there and it gives you all sorts of information, including, including the RISEC. Um, we, our schools feed into the Grossmont Union High School District. Cajon Valley is a K to eight district, but our high school district is the Grossmont. And this document here, uh, my partner, Chris, my, my ultra conventional friend, he aligned all the CTA pathways, CTE pathways in all the different schools and connected them to the RIAS, to the couple of the RIASET codes. And so if you're having a conversation in that middle school time and students seem to be real interested and they wanna take the CTE pathway, you can kind of show that, oh, um, so look at here, you know, Grossmont has a really good education pathway. I know you wanted to become, you're interested in a teacher. You have a lot of the strengths and interests and values for teaching. There's the career pathway there, uh, Grossmont, and you know, with your social helper abilities, you can go take classes um, around that social and that teaching. So that was something we just kind of connected. It's pretty useful. I think sim there's similar CTE pathways in many of the schools, so you can kind of just see which one aligns to which schools you have. So some good relevance and connections to have to show your students and parents if they're wondering what this all is. It's, it's out there and it's, it's um, based on the, on the RIA set codes. And then these are just for later, you can go look and see how they're, the RIA sets in the classrooms and the different classrooms and how it's integrated um, in different schools from kindergarten through you know, eighth grade that we have um, with our school district. So strengths is another avenue that we are exploring um, or that we can talk about with our students. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be in the order of doing interest first and then strengths. Sometimes students get sent to us and we have to already start thinking about their strengths because I think what's difficult um, being a counselor is that we get sent certain kids and we are the ones that have to find that strength. We, we have to look at this pile of hay and look for what's this one great thing this kid is good at. So are they a leader? Are they persuasive? Are they helper? Are they social? Are they an includer? So by looking at kids' strengths, we're now changing the conversation. We're no longer saying, oh, you have D's and F's. You're not doing well. You're not motivated. You're, um, you're just not going to, you know, add up to anything in life. We're talking about what are you good at? What is something you're passionate about? What do you think you can contribute to the world? And the main reason why we talk about strengths is because it's what we write on our resumes, right? It's like, what are your strengths? It's one of the things that we write. And then also it ends up being one of the questions in your interview. What's something that you can bring to the table by being part of our company? So it's important that we all know our strengths so that we can speak about our strengths and be able to share what they are. You will have access to this video. We are not gonna play it right now, but that's the reason why we wanna focus on strengths. 
And then the other piece is the values, the why, you know, what's important to us and how do we and like to get our work done? What, how do we like to work? And so we have, we kind of show that here, we have two different careers. We have, they're both kind of lead with conventional from the traditional state standing. We have what would be somebody that's probably a computer scientist or computer engineer, IT, working on the computer. And then you have a farmer who's got to keep the schedule and look at those beautiful organized fields. So what it comes down to is they're both conventional organizers. They have very probably similar strengths and traits. And this is what who you are and what you enjoy doing. It just now you have to look at what where does my workplace values fall? Do I want to work kind of more indoors, possibly in a cubicle or from home? Because, it, you know, we can do some IT from home or work for a school districts or such, but it's going to be indoors. Or do I value working in the outdoors? Um, working seasonally, perhaps long hours, long days for span of the year and um, long hours, like I said, from sun up to sundown and working with my hands, getting dirty and living in a beautiful place and working there in the farm. So that's where that workplace values comes in. And again, having that conversation with students, if they really enjoy being outdoors, we can kind of talk to them about which careers fall and which what pathway they would enjoy doing based on that that being outdoors and being adventurous, or do they have the skills and they prefer to be indoors? Um, you know, for my career, I am social. I, I indoors is typically what, what I value for work. Then on the weekend, that's where my realistic comes in. You know, I, we camp. I coach my daughter's softball team. As a kid, I played sports. So in my spare time and my hobbies is where my part of my um, my RISEC R comes in. But to, for the workplace, I'm going to value working indoors because I can't. I don't want to be outdoors and it's hot in San Diego. And so I pr prefer being indoors. So that's where the work values comes in place in that conversation with students. And this is kind of a, a drastic example, but um, makes that connection. And then, so when I first got started, oh, sorry. No, Did you say, want to do this one? No, I okay. want you to, because this is all, this is your brain power. <laughs> okay. Um, when we start, when I started as a counselor 15 years ago, the academic review was very much a very daunting document that I had to fill. Um, and it talked about students' attendance and their suspensions, referrals, their behavior, their low test scores. And I remember having to bring in kids that never met me and just say, hey, look at this is what we have on file about you and it basically gets to follow you the rest of your life. And it was just a very not positive um, thing. But now Melanie created a way that we can use this same exact or a different form where we have strengths, interests and values where we get to talk about it briefly and kind of just go from there. So if you see and you will have access um, in the Google slide sheet it says, what are the letters that you think you are? And then what, after you take one of the little tests, what are you actually doing? Mm -hmm. um, and then the last question is, what are the ones that you claim? Because part of me sometimes like, I feel like I'm, I could be this letter and this letter, but then as time progresses, like, nope, I'm really this kind of person. And then you're going to write about what your different letter is and why you think that is the way that you are. So it's very much um, just putting it to paper. I think putting what you are on paper just really solidifies and helps a student really understand who they are and own it. And then it has some strengths and values. And then we also put a little more information um, to kind of give like a snapshot of what each one means. If you're kind of in the middle of a conversation with students, what are the strengths, how to explain it a little more to students, breaks down the interest component as well, what that means, and then the kind of that values component. So you have some reflection. Um, so yeah, we've changed it and we trained all of our counselors in our district this year to kind of look at this approach differently. So um, it's, it's, it's good for kids, so it, it's good work. All right, and that's um, linked there on a PDF for you. And then another um, component too, and if you have the opportunity, you have students come in and they're really interested in different types of careers is that meeting a professional and seeing that future self um, and how does that look and where can I meet somebody and talk to somebody? Because many times they might be 
really gung-ho on being a firefighter, for example, then they might see that the day-to-day -day and hear about it and meet one and go, uh, maybe that's not really something I want to do, or maybe it is, but that reflective piece of, yes, I want to do it because, and not really for me, is just as important. And so we try to align um, professionals to meet students when we can, when they have an interest, and arranging that is a little easier through the Zoom now that we can have where students actually want can see where their workplace is and see them building something. My husband did a, a meet a pro session as a carpenter. So he was in his workshop and students could see him actually, you know, cutting something and sanding and painting. And it just brought to life um, a little a little more realia for the students to see that that professional. So if you have an opportunity to bring in professionals, you know, beyond just the career day that we kind of had when we were younger, but really seeing what the students are interested in and really tapping into even people in your close community. Like that's where we have that video there. The police department, they went out to the forensics lab and did a, a Zoom chat with some classes in the forensic lab, all the women that worked in the forensic lab right there. And you can you know, have that conversation with students like, you might want to be interested in the police force, but maybe you don't actually want to be like an on the beat cop, but there's lots of different careers within the police station that might align more to your strengths, interests, values. And so even exposing them to what's inside those buildings, you might want to work in a hospital, but you don't want to necessarily be a nurse or doctor. You can find other careers that align to your strengths, interests, values. So that meeting a professional is a key component too, if you can make that happen. And these are just so we actually can. Uh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Um, so as I had mentioned before, uh, anyone can be a career coach. And as a career coach, students can ask, what do you enjoy doing? Um, what is your RIASEC letters? What activities do you lose track time doing? And what jobs are here in wherever you're at? What RIASEC letter schemes do you think that that person has? So students can take can make anyone a career coach. Remember I had said that earlier. So we can bring these questions, your students can bring these questions to anyone that they're interested in. And I think we're, we're, we don't have too much more time, but this is an activity that if you had a small group, it's a thumbs up activity. It kind of aligns and you can see connections to what you do every day um, that align to like the RIASEC and some of your strengths. So we'll just do a quick one, we'll do one of them. Um, this one is thumbs up. Usually if you're in person, you can have them stand up. So thumbs up if you talk to people on elevators, in grocery stores, on airplanes, wherever you go. So we have a few of those thumbs up. So you can remember going back, it kind of is that enterprising and real um, talking people, striking up conversations. You might be naturally good at those th sorts of things. And that's where that aligns to that. And then eh, we'll do one more. Thumbs up if you have a color-coded or otherwise organized closet. So if you have that beautiful closet there, you are um, have that, that conventional organizing, you, you value organization and all those sorts of things. So this is just kind of an activity to, to do with, it's fun, people giggle, they laugh. Um, and then, okay, thumbs up if you are always trying to figure out the plot of a movie before anyone else does. I see some nods there, some thumbs up. So if you're problem solving and you're investigating, so that investigative problem solver. So you can find ways. Thumbs up if you just want everyone to get along, which that's most of us here on this, this chat here because we're those social helpers. So yes, you would like to everybody to get along. And then last one, thumbs up if you always pick someone to race on the freeway. You're, you're safe, we're not gonna tell. <laughs> and that's you know, that competition, the competitiveness of an enterprising persuader typically would be the ones that may want to raise somebody on the freeway. All right. So that's just a fun activity you can do with students just to kind of connect, you know, in a fun way, especially in a training to sit down, you can stand up, sit down. And that's just a video on Superintendent Sammy. When he met, he got to shadow and he met the pro after he talked about it. Our superintendent took him on a little uh, on a day with him and he got to go around to different schools and he dressed up in a suit. So he had a suit on and he's looking very fancy. And I guess uh, best highlight of the day, I asked him afterwards, what was the favorite part? He said, 
The superintendent has snacks in his glove department compartment. So apparently he has really yummy snacks. So he's gonna strive to be that superintendent with uh, delicious snacks in his car. Um, so we have, we're just about wrapping up. If you have any questions for us, if you think about it later, our email is there. We're also on Twitter where you can follow some of the work we've done. If you, it, all the things we provided today, it's out there, it's for you to use and to tailor to your needs. But there is a whole curriculum based on the world of work and, and the foundation of RISEC. If your district or school's interested, there's links there to that to seek more information. But what we provided today is um, for you to take and we want any and all students to have access to this because it just makes our world a better place when our students are happy, healthy, and uh, getting ready for employment, whatever that might be, whether it's, um, like I said, dignity in all work, and we're here to support you in your journey as well. Madeline, any closing thoughts? No, um, I don't know if um, Melanie had mentioned that if you continue looking in the later slides after um, slide 60, you'll see um, a little career card activity heads up that you can use. Again, it's a free resource that um, gifted to you for participating with us today. Um, so just more information for you. We wanted to give you as much as you could use, hopefully for the remainder of this year and maybe you know, next year kind of moving forward, um, but really changing those conversations, making sure that it's not a transactional conversation, but a transformational um, one. So thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. you. And Thanks there's more, um, any papers or research you wanna read further there, it's on that slide as well. So, but don't hesitate to reach out as you move forward if you use these resources. Thank you. And also that. just so you guys know, it will be archived. So we are recording right now and those um, links will be sent out from um, Tanya. So thank you so much, Madeline, Melanie. It was awesome learning today about the RIASEC and I appreciate you spending an hour with all of us. And if you haven't taken the um, survey, please do so before you, you finish your day today, everyone. With that, have a wonderful afternoon. And again, thank you. Thank you, Erin. Thank you.